Alrighty, welcome back everybody. This is Aussie Gamer 17 and this is part 11 of my 100% walkthrough for Resident Evil 3. Difference being we're going to do a full hardcore run in this video and we're going to do it without healing. Now as we get into the game here we are skipping all cutscenes. Uh, you may need to watch my previous video where I cover how to farm some points to use in the in-game store and buy the items that we are going to use to help us do this run, especially to do it without healing. Of course, there is one heal that is mandatory part of the story. We will be doing that heal, but there is a big achievement for uh, beating the game without healing apart from that one heal, and we're going to cover it here. Okay, so skipping all the cutscenes and uh, all the bathroom and stuff in here, uh, I'm going to talk you through, as I go through here, some of the tactics and things that I did. Um, but if there's nothing to really talk about, I am going to be trying to save my voice a little bit, guys. I've had a few voice problems lately. So I'll probably uh, be a little bit more quiet during the video. And all of this uh, start section is uh, all pretty self-explanatory. And if you've beaten the game and gotten up to here, you know exactly what to do already. What the hell is that thing? Now the items mentioned in that previous video we are going to be getting out of the item box and they are the infinite rocket launcher, we're going to have the two recovery coins and we're going to have the two iron defense coins. There's a bunch of other stuff that, that may be available in the item box if you've had enough points uh, but I'm just going to specifically use those items to get through this hardcore run to show you that it can be done if you didn't have uh, enough points. The other thing of note that we're doing here in the hardcore run is you'll notice that I don't save at all. I'm going to rely solely on auto saves. The auto saves in hardcore mode are very, very generous. In fact, the auto saves in every difficulty are generous until you get to inferno mode where there aren't any uh, auto saves. So that's something to keep note of. You okay? How did this all happen so fast? I don't know. One fucked up thing always leads to another. It's like Arclay on steroids. Hey! Hey, wait! Down here! Damn it! How could How could this many people be infected? After you skip this scene, guys, you do need to rush past that guy that uh, can grab you if you don't run straight to Brad. Something to uh, sorry, Brad. also keep in mind. As we already know, we don't waste any ammo on those zombies there. We just turn the other way and uh, make a run for it. This bit here, no, sorry, that's in Inferno mode. That bit, just just to get to this door, can be the first real tricky bit uh, in Inferno mode. So more on that when you uh, when I get that video out. There will only be one more video in this series, guys, and that will be my Inferno run, which can be used to help you through Nightmare mode as well. The enemy placements are the same in Nightmare mode and Inferno mode, but they are different to this current run on Hardcore. Hardcore is the same as assisted and standard in terms of enemy placements. Now the next tricky bit uh, for this playthrough is coming right up when we get the cutscene at the elevator. As soon as we uh, skip the cutscene from the elevator and regain control of Jill, run to the left as quickly as you can. You may even want to use dodge if you need to. Run to the left. That guy will step forward towards where we were standing. We'll run around him. And watch out for the guy that's on the ground near the elevator. And there we go. Very, very simple. As long as you know what to do. And now you do if you're listening to this. Okay, all of this straightforward. Oh, come on. Start, damn it. It's my turn, bitch. And 
and once you've uh, held right trigger, you, you can actually skip that scene. I think we're in the clear. Oh, come on. Who's the dipshit that closed this? Sorry, we're gonna have to go around. Hey, what do you know about that monster? Nothing. I've never seen anything like it. But it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? No, thanks. He's all yours. <laughs> Listen, I promise you're in good hands. Not sure if that came through on the mic. Number one, my phone went vibrated, and number two, I was just having a drink, but uh, gotta keep hydrated with these voice problems. Whoa, 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 whoa! This is all about waiting for Carlos to open doors for us. This bit. You coming? Come on, it's this way. First things first. We need to get you geared up. Head up to street level. You'll find supplies there. Step ahead of you, Carlos. We're already on our way. I normally add the uh, the text that you can see rolling across the bottom of the screen. I normally add that, that in in post because I'm normally doing my commentary live. Please do, uh, if you uh, if you can support the channel financially, go and head over to my Patreon page, support me over there. It's, it can be as little as $1 to join the Aussie Army over there. Uh, what I did there is pick up the two uh, inventory pouches next to the item box, and then we go into the item box and we get out those items that I talked about earlier. You'll see a few other items available in my item box. I'm not picking those up. Uh, I'm going to stick to what we said just so that I can show you how it's done. So we've got the two iron defense coins, the two um, recovery coins. I accidentally picked up the assault coins, so I'm putting those back, and we're going to do it without the assault coins. If you do have them, though, definitely grab them. They definitely help, uh, especially with a few of the boss fights. If you've got the two assault coins and the uh, infinite rocket launcher, all of the boss fights except for the final boss fight become nothing. I always take out that guy... Unless you're like doing a speed run or something. Um, and that's going to be the case for a lot of these guys. There are enemies that you could dodge if you wanted to. I decide to dodge this guy here. Uh, but if you want to be safe, use the rocket launcher before you do the dodge. I'm going to turn around and use the rocket launcher on them anyway. Because we do have to come back through there later. So if you're not uh, speed running or anything like that, use the rocket launcher more often than not. Once you're back in control, make sure you take them out. I always fire a little rocket off at these guys as well. If it doesn't take out that closest zombie, you might need to fire another rocket like I did. And through the donuts, uh, the donut store. Fire a rocket at this guy. Nearly blew myself up with the red barrel, but all good. And we're just heading straight for the hose, guys, for those that are wondering what we're doing. Straight for the hose. We're just going to be uh, doing this as quickly as we can. Not not exactly a speed run, but um, we're not going to dilly-dally, that's for sure. So grab the hose. Once we've got the hose, we need to go straight back to the fire now. Another thing to mention, guys, is I do stream. It's probably one of the big reasons I have had these voice problems is that I, that I also stream over on Twitch and we've been growing really, really big over there and I get a bit excited and that is probably what caused me to lose my voice a little bit. We had a giant stream the other night and uh, I lost my voice. But please do, if you see me over there, please come and say hello over on Twitch. Let me know that you've uh, been watching these YouTube videos. I'd love to say hi to you guys. Yeah, I forgot that I didn't automatically have the bolt cutters there for a second. Make sure you pick them up and cut the chain. Is someone in here? 
but for all future playthroughs, we'll automatically have those bolt cutters as well as the lock picks. Watch this guy disappear. Where'd he go? Okay, you need to stop here and take care of both dogs. Uh, if you miss the second one like I did, you may need two rockets. So you could uh, do that a little better as well. Once you go in that door, just clear your path with the rocket there. Clear the stairs with that rocket as well. Now, as we know, it is a no heals run, guys. But we are about to pick up a green herb and do the one heal that we have to do. It's basically part of the story, but the game doesn't actually tell you that. Pick up the green herb here. And then lockpick. Oh, we have to go get the lockpick. Again, I forgot that we didn't grab it out of the uh, item box. Oh my god. Examine the uh, little box and grab the lockpick. Okay, so we're going to get uh, infected with the parasite here, and then we're going to use the green herb. Just a reminder again, guys, sorry if I'm going over this too much, but this is the one and only heal we can do for the entire playthrough. But don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds with our recovery coins. And with the infinite rocket launcher. Easy done. All right, we're just going to get through this area as quickly as we can. What I like to do is run all the way to the first uh, power supply thingy. Similar to what we did in our farming run, actually. Shoot a rocket to clear the space enough for us to turn that on. Run to the next one. You might want to dodge there, but our recovery coins will uh, recover that little hit. Once you get here, turn around, shoot another rocket. Give us enough time to turn this on. And again, if you're not in too much of a hurry, I, I, I'm just rushing through this. Uh, you can stop and fire a few extra rockets if you prefer. Got a nice dodge past that guy. And same thing again when we get to number three. That was an extra dodge just, just to look good, guys. There's no real time commitment for this run, guys. I just thought, for those that want to get the achievements as quickly as possible. Again, probably could have used a rocket there, but... You know, if you find yourself getting um, too many injuries and you're not healing up quick enough, that's when I would definitely stop and uh, use the rocket launcher to uh, clear out the area a little bit more. All right, so here we are on our way to the fourth... Um, I don't even know what to call these things. Power switches. Alright. And don't forget, these cocoons will burst open. If you do what I did just then, you're going to shoot the rocket too early before they really have um, hitboxes, which is a little bit silly. Oop, wrong one. Oop. Once again, none of that really matters if you take a little bit of damage there like that. By the time you run to the next area where you're going to have any trouble, you will have, will have uh, fully healed. All right, so out we go. Now that we've turned the power back on, after this little okay. cutscene anyway, well, our job will switch. then be to head all the way back to the subway control room and uh, fix the little puzzle there. Carla. You can skip all the little radio scenes as well. Nothing to worry about in here. But we're going to meet someone again. Obviously, if you've watched my other videos, you've already seen what happens here. Very, very important that you shoot him with the rocket launcher here until you see the weapons case drop. Just like that. That's how you know that he is well and truly stunned. And you're going to have enough room 
to run out this way. And he could just dodge past this enemy or use the rocket launcher like that. You do have to sort of just give those zombies there a little bit of a wide berth. And here he is. Sometimes he doesn't show up there. Sometimes he shows up at the top of the stairs. If you do see him, he's in your way. Either electrocute him there so that you can get past or shoot him again until he either drops an item or drops to his knees. Once we're out of the donut store, take out the zombies at the stairs here. And this room here is the subway control room. Skip the radio call right, and punch in the puzzle the answer. FA02, RA03, and SA02. Pretty easy. Same as uh, all the other runs, guys. Carlos, it's me. I finished inputting the subway room. Chill, you are amazing. Tough as nails, too. Hurry back to the station. Make sure the subway's ready to depart. Take care of that guy as he gets up. I like to uh, take care of this guy. If I'm uh, doing a serious, uh, trying to get a good time, I would just dodge past that guy as well. Same thing here, guys. After we skip this cutscene, we're going to drop Nemesis to his knees again. Should drop another box once you've hit him enough. There we go. Also good enough if he dropped to his knee like he did before that last shot, guys. Take care of these guys at the top of the stairs. We'll have enough time to do that. Uh, and then be careful of the guy getting out of the cop car. Just give him a wide berth. Uh, hit the dodge button just in case. Not sure why this area wasn't clear. Um, if you cleared it properly earlier, it should already be clear, maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, take care of those guys at the corner. That cop uniform zombie always uh, sneaks around that corner as you approach. And it would have been smarter to use the rocket launcher um, at the uh, roller door there, but I uh, decided to just uh, risk it, and we got away with a little dodge and then snuck under the door. All right. Now, what you want to do here is drop him to his knees. I like to get a little bit of distance from him right there at the start. Drop him where he drops the item again. That will actually give us enough time to run all the way to the, uh, the vent covering that we remove and get out of this area, guys. There we go. Skip the cutscene. Head inside. I'll grab some more water. I feel like it's it, my voice is still not a 100%, but uh, good enough to make this video, I think. And a shout out to you, those of you in the comments that have uh, given me some well wishes. I really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, make sure you join my Discord too. I do. Um, I get a lot of questions about when's the next video and all that. YouTube can be a little bit hard in regards to notifi notifications and stuff like that. Um, definitely come and say good day on the Discord as well. There's a link in the video description. I uh, check that. I'm on that, you know, a hundred times a day. So. Um, as well as YouTube. I'm not saying definitely don't stop giving me comments on YouTube because that helps my channel. But um, feel free to say hello on Discord as well. 
Now find that if you don't have the assault coins, sometimes even with the open mouth, you still have to shoot them twice here on hardcore mode. So just keep that in mind so that you don't get yourself eaten. And we're heading through the sewer. We went right at the fork, I forgot to mention. So make sure you go right at the fork, straight to the battery, up this ladder and uh, to the battery. Grab the battery and then head back the way we came. In uh, higher difficulties, there's uh, one of those big monster things behind the waterfall there. So keep that in mind if you try that without watching my next video. Another two shots to him, and don't forget the one that's going to jump over the uh, handrail just here after we turn around this corner. I don't like it how Jill uh, on the height... Is it on this difficulty as well? She didn't do it then, but she uh, sometimes reacts to them jumping. Maybe it's if you're a little bit closer. And it actually um, stops you from being able to shoot as quickly as you want to. All right, up that ladder at the end and pop the battery in here. In all honesty, you do not have to shoot that guy. You can get a, around this whole upper area without even worrying about that guy. But um, look, we're going for safety. When we're doing a no-heal run and uh, I'm relying on auto saves, I'm just going for safety. Not going for the fastest um, playtime possible. Although I do know this recording. Um, we get the game done in almost an hour flat. And I'm not sure if that included any... Um, off-camera backtracking or um, stuff where I just uh, accidentally left it on pause while I'm writing notes or anything like that because I always write notes even during these recordings. But usually they're notes to help me with the editing process. All right, up the ladder at the end. Uh-oh. Okay, once we're here, we're going to make our way... Now you can dodge past this guy before the roller door once again. Uh, he seems to be, for me anyway, a little bit more tricky than some of the other dodgers. So I decided to use the rocket launcher there. And if you're trying to be safe, I advise the same strategy. Don't forget this guy at the bottom of the stairs. Same option. You can dodge or you can use the rocket launcher. doing now is heading all the way to the roof guys nothing uh, important to let you guys know Here at the boss fight, all you gotta do is keep shooting him. Keep shooting him. Don't miss like I did just there. Even once you've dropped him, keep shooting him. I was gonna say, I've just started moving off to the left. If this was Inferno mode, I would definitely move off to the left. Give yourself a little bit more time, but uh, pretty simple fight with the rocket launcher, guys. There we go. He's done. 
skip the scene, and off we go again. And here you'll see me trying and trying and trying to skip this scene. I couldn't work out why it didn't let me until I watched this back and I saw yeah. that the game was trying to auto save and it, I, apparently it doesn't let me skip the scene while it's auto saving. I could at any point now, but I figured let's just walk to the fire truck. I did what I had to. And maybe I'll try again now. Will I? Will I? Yeah, there we go. The first time I saw this when playing this, guys, I loved it. I loved seeing the street from um, RE2 off to our right here. I don't think I look up on this recording. Is the RPD. Just uh, really good memories, RE2. Don't forget to take out the uh, zombie there having a bit of a feed. She can be a hassle sometimes. Into the Kendo store. Skip the cutscene and then grab the key, guys. Now we don't need to worry about this guy here playing possum because we don't need the red herb but this guy does get up as we approach so we'll take care of him and there's going to be a guy in the uh, second room of this building we're going to take him out as well I believe that's the same on all difficulties there and now we're going to meet our friend again now since doing this recording I've actually come up with a better way to avoid the, uh, the red line and that is not to dodge, but just to run to the side like I did at the end there. If you're on higher difficulties, you want to turn around right about now and you want to uh, take him out, actually. Where I said now is probably too late. But you do want to uh, drop him, but this way I'm going to keep running and get to the cutscene. But uh, yeah, if you're having trouble there at all, even on this difficulty, it can't hurt to turn around and just give him a few shots with the rocket launcher to uh, stop him. This bit here, literally just run straight. Um, I think I tried to dodge there. It do you don't need to dodge. Just run straight. Hug the right hand side a little bit, uh, but just run. Even if you get hit a little bit, just keep running till, till you get the cut scene. Okay, and now we're actually approaching uh, an area that I've seen a lot of people having trouble with. I've spoken to people on Twitch and uh, on my Discord and things like that about this section and how to uh, avoid the giant rolling head a little bit easier. Uh, the only solution I've come up with, and it seems to work for me every single time, um, is not to skip this cutscene. If you don't skip it, you get just a tiny little bit more time just as the uh, cutscene ends to turn and run and head for the, uh, the side over here where you can avoid the giant head. As soon as it's passed though, you want to head back up as quickly as you can. It's even more important in higher difficulties because right now, Nemesis is after us again. If you turned around, you'd, you'd see him on our tail there. You saw the uh, red line from his rocket launcher for a second. All right, and you're pretty safe once you get to this point. Just follow Carlos and, until you get a cutscene. Gee, I, I think I said I would uh, talk less, but I don't think I've stopped talking. Hey, you saved my ass first. You're a hell of a lot braver than me. Well, what matters is that we can get everyone out of the city now. Yeah, uh, you'll be safe. What about you? Uh, from the sound of it, I won't be catching the train. Why not? No, oh, there'll be new orders. If it means I can help save the city, it's fine by me.
Okay, and here we go in charge of Carlos for the first time again. You just move forward through this opening to trigger the cutscene. And once we've skipped that, we're going to have to take care of Brad. You just need to take care of him enough uh, to get yourself up the stairs. Um, since this guy is busy unlocking the door anyway, I may as well just fire a few rounds. Alright. Now, with Carlos, you're going to find it too hip pouches on the counter here inventory upgrades grab both of those and we're gonna go drop everything in the item box and we're gonna grab out the exact same things that we had with Jill guys leaving the assault coins if I remember this time yep there we go so the recovery coins the defense coins and the rocket launcher Custody. I thought this was a rescue. Now we just have to wait for this little uh, Carlo, computer scene to play out, so that he'll then open the, the uh, shutter door. Remember, Bard had access to Umbrella's darkest secrets. He knows we'll try to keep him under our thumbs. So this search and rescue mission is really more like find and detain. Hmm. Right. Good to know. I'll open the shutter so you can get through. You stay here and find out what's been going on here at the station. Call you if I find anything. Hey! Be careful. Yeah. You too, man. Alright. Our first job is to go upstairs and grab the key. So we're going to head straight for the key. What the hell was that thing? Just run through these halls until you get to the... Uh, corner where there's going to be some zombies. Alright, take these, this guy out. We go. Now, there's going to be someone come through the window. Make sure you take care of them. And then someone come through the door, take care of him. And through we go. Skip this little radio scene. Through this door, there's going to be some more zombies. Take care of them. Sometimes there's another one around this corner here, guys. Like that. So be ready for that. Head up the stairs. There's always a zombie playing possum on the, on the next landing. After we skip this uh, little radio uh, spot again. Take care of him. And here's the key on these boxes here. All right, now we now need to head to the uh, safety combination lockery thingamajiggies. So all the way back down, but get ready for a liquor on our way back. Sometimes he actually comes around this corner, but usually he's sitting right here. All right, take care of him. Unlock the door with the key. And we're going to punch 104 in here. Now, don't, don't forget there's a zombie right there after you've punched the code in and opened the locker. And sometimes another one will come through that door, but I don't think that's happened to me every time. I'd have to double check my notes. But anyway, be ready for someone to come through the door. Now that we have the battery, we're going to go up to the shower room. Skip another scene there and then interact with the explosives or the uh, detonator or whatever it is. Combine the battery with the detonator and place it on the explosives. Skip the scene. And even if you can't see, just clear the way with the rocket launcher. One at a time, take a number. I love that. Take a number. Alright. Watch out for the guy coming through the door and the liquor on the other side of the door. And then you can run straight for this door. And that is the end of the uh, first Carlo sequence. Because as soon as we interact with this door the second time, 
skip the cut scenes, we're back to Jill. And this time she's already got the rocket launcher. can just run past these guys as they're getting up. If you're too slow though, use the rocket launcher and then be ready for the guys at the top of the stairs here. Wrong way, turn left, left. <laughs> All right, and up the ladder. Okay, we don't need to pick up anything out here. We're gonna run straight to the next boss fight, guys. Once again, very, very simple with the rocket launcher. Even simpler, if that's a word, if you have the assault coins, guys. I've seen this boss taken out in two hits of the rocket launcher, if you have the assault coins. All right, here we go. As soon as that scene is over, just keep firing into him. Now this can be done without him running off and doing his loops and things like that. I don't know what happened there, but keep firing. Now if he does do that, just keep trying to hit him um, to knock him back down. Try and try not let him let land on you. And once he's back down, just keep firing. There's no real risk uh, in that fight that I can think of, guys. Skip the cutscenes. Skip the skip the radio transmission. And as soon as we can continue, we'll do that. Skip all the cutscenes. And we're gonna end up in the hospital with Carlos. Our first objective now, guys, is we need to go all the way upstairs. And once again, uh, our objective is to get a key. It's doing the same thing to me here. I can't skip the uh, radio transmission while the game is auto-saving there. All right, so first, through this first section, Take out the zombies here. Take out the one coming through the door. There's a reminder rolling at the bottom of the screen about my Twitch streams, guys. I use that really to supplement my ability to make these videos here on YouTube. But also, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun over on Twitch, so please come and say hi, guys. Through here, take care of these zombies. Turn left. And once you're through that door, head for the stairs. And we have to go all the way upstairs so that we can then drop out the window to where the key is, if you remember. Not much really to worry about before we get the key. So drop out the second window. The key will be right on the ground in front of us. And now what we need to do guys is head all the way back upstairs. And once we're uh, in the upstairs area, after we come off the roof, we're gonna turn left and head to the room where we're gonna use the key to gain access to a locker room where we're gonna get the key card. So here we go, don't worry about him. We don't come back past here, so we're just gonna leave him. No, I did decide to shoot him. Okay, we'll shoot him. Very unnecessary there. Turn left, like I said. Into this room here. And unlock the door. Can get rid of these keys. Don't think it's overly important. Other than my OCD. All right, over to the locker and get the key card. Okay, once we've got the key card, we need to head back uh, and into the, uh, I don't know what the room is, but we're gonna head and find the tape. Don't forget about the uh, Battletoad after the little cutscene there. 
Christ. All right, once you go down this passage, it's the room directly in front of you. Now, there's no enemies in here, but if you're on the higher difficulties, there'll be a liquor right where I'm standing now. Okay, use the ID card. We're going to head in there where the two battle toads are and grab the tape. And don't forget the uh, enemies here. Take care of the two battle toads. Did we get him? Nope. There we go. All right, now that we've got the tape, we can open this door just for a shortcut back downstairs. We need to head back to, I believe it's called the reception area, where we can find the tape player and use it to access the, uh, the door in that area. So forget about these guys as they break through the glass, clear a, clear a path through there and we're going to grab the uh, tape player off the desk here. Or the counter. Head over to the intercom here. Combine the uh, tape and the tape player. And use them on the intercom. All I wanted to know was what the documents were doing in your office in the first place. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I'm the best. As soon as you can get through the door, rush through. Find the uh, the good doctor. Tyrell. Skip the radio transmission. Access this computer to continue the uh, cutscene. Skip the cutscene. Head through the door and grab the vaccine. All right, Joe. Hang tight. T. Skip another radio call, and we're going to head all the way back to Jill now. Make sure you take care of this guy as he comes out. Uh, if you try and ignore him, he can follow you through this door and end up catching up to you and uh, causing you some grief. So I like to take him out, especially on a no heels run, am I right? All right, now straight back to Jill. You're gonna be okay, Jill. Give her the vaccine, skip the cutscenes, and now we're going to do horde mode. Very, very, very simple here, guys. Even easier than how we did it in uh, our first playthrough and how we did it in the farming run. Now, if you get the right timing with the zombies, the three windows on the left, the zombies that come through those windows, you can actually take all three of them out with just one rocket. And all we're doing here, guys, is we're waiting, obviously, for the zombies to come through the window, but more importantly, we're waiting for the lights to go out. As soon as the lights go out, we need to just step away a little bit and take out the battle toad that comes through the door right behind us.
Okay, there's the lights. Here we go, take care of him. Head inside, turn the lights back on. Take care of this guy on the ground so that he doesn't come out and surprise us. Check your corners as you come back out. So if you quick like that, you should be fine. And now what we're doing is uh, repeating the process and waiting for the second battle toad to come through that window, uh, basically the middle of the three left windows, this window here. You always come through that window eventually. Come on, mate, I'm ready for you. Check the uh, right hand side for a little while there. Where is he? Come on, mate. Nope, still not a battle toad. See there, I waited even though the, uh, the left zombie was ready to be uh, fired upon. There he is. There's the battle toad. But yeah, making sure that I could get two for one there. All right, shortly after the battle toad, we know we haven't got long to go before we'll get the little cutscene. At the end of that cutscene, we're gonna have a whole horde of zombies right in front of us. We're gonna shoot a rocket at them, and then we're gonna go and uh, set up the explosives, guys. So shoot them, set up the explosives, grab the detonator first, and then place the detonator. And now we just have to survive for 30 more seconds. Pretty simple here. Alright, there we go. Skip that cutscene. Not sure if you have to run over here, there's just a short radio message that we've got to skip. Skip another cutscene and another one. And I think one more, and then we'll be in charge of Jill. Here we go. Okay, our mission as Jill is literally just to head to the underground facility. We do not have to go in and explore the hospital this time. So head here and we'll use the lockpick for the final time in this run. The more I think about it, the uh, Inferno run that we're going to do next is a lot like this one. I probably could have covered it all in one video, guys, but uh, I hope you appreciate two separate videos for it. The enemy placements are just different enough that I've thought it um, warranted a whole video for the whole uh, Inferno run. I'll do it just like this. I'll do one big video for the uh, entire Inferno run. Alright, so down the first elevator. Lower this little one. Little one. Okay, we are going to uh, also pick up an achievement here on this run if you didn't get it on your first run. I know it's definitely possible that you did get it on your first run. Now the achievement is uh, for grabbing the three fuses and placing them into their positions um, 
within five minutes, guys. I believe that timer starts as soon as we hit the button over here. Okay, so here we go. We grab the three fuses and place them back in that fuse box within five minutes. So we're going to turn this on. Back up a little bit. You don't need to take care of this guy, but he might might cause us trouble a little bit later. So let's just uh, take him out. Doesn't cost us any time. As soon as that uh, little gate opens, we can head through and raise this platform and grab the first fuse. Head down the ladder. Be ready for the dogs. Here we go. Did not need that second rocket. We got them both. Head around the back. Now, just to be uh, cautious, we're going to take care of this guy with a rocket. You can dodge past him and get through this gap. Right, through the gap, round to the right and up the stairs. We're not going to go grab the uh, the weapon part this time. Up the stairs, ignore the door and head across the platforms again. Hit this switch. Same as our previous run though, guys. When we drop down or... or climb down this ladder and grab this uh, next fuse, we are not going to be, uh, you know, fighting any enemies here. We're going to ignore all the enemies down here is what I'm trying to say. Grab the fuse, head back to the opposite wall to avoid these zombies and definitely avoid this guy coming out down the end. Get straight to the ladder and straight up the ladder. Two problems if you stop and shoot some rockets at him. Some of the zombies might grab you from behind and it also costs you a few seconds. Much, much easier to just run up the ladder. All right, gonna use a rocket in this room. Take care of these guys. If you do it better than I did, you'll take care of all of them with one rocket. Okay, we're gonna go through here. Hop down the ladder and go and grab fuse number three, but don't forget the hunter that jumps out at you. Right here. All right, here goes. Back up the ladder and back through the door. Immediately turn left and unlock this door. Here we are back in the uh, room. You can grab an inventory pouch there, but I don't grab it because we just don't need it, guys. So um, if you're doing the no heals run like me and you're playing on hardcore, we just don't need it. Take care of those zombies. Once again, you can do it without taking care of those zombies, but we're uh, going for the cautious approach here. All right, there we go, guys. There is the achievement. So if you did that in under five minutes, you will uh, get the achievement as well. Shit. And now we just have to interact with this uh, computer screen here to move things along. This way. And now we have to follow Tyrell for a tiny bit. We'll find the vaccine up ahead. Super, super close to the end now, guys. Still no need to uh, worry about saving or anything, guys. The uh, Auto saves are very, very generous. I would, however, recommend making a manual save if you were planning on putting the game down, uh, if you had to go to bed or go do something or, or anything else um, where you were having a break from the game. But otherwise, just rely on the auto saves. Okay, once that scene's over, our job now is to go and get the flash drive so that we can use it on the door we just passed there. Head up the stairs and into this room on the left here. Head to our right and grab the flash drive. Nothing else of note to worry about for this little bit. All 
right, once we've got it, head back downstairs. Don't forget the uh, zombies and uh, freaky, freak things that are in this room. Once we've opened it up. difference between this and the rocket launcher guys is that we only need to hit them once. Now don't do what I did just then, I forgot the guy on the stairs in that first room. So uh, you do want to take care of him. We're going to have to deal with him on the way back and he could, he could have moved so he can be a bit of a surprise later. There is a zombie on the ground just behind us right now. He's, he's about to get up as we push this battery in. You can take care of him before you push the battery in. Um, but I find it's easy just to ignore him. He just got up, but we're not going to have to deal with him. So we'll just uh, keep going. Don't forget to push the button to our left like I did there. So now what we're doing, guys, is we're grabbing the two parts of the vaccine, I guess I'll call it. Heading off this way to get the first part. Out of the way. And yeah, don't forget the guys that come through this door as you approach it. And don't forget this, this zombie on the floor there too. She nearly got me on Inferno mode. I just recorded Inferno mode. Okay prior to recording this commentary guys and hoo, 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 nearly stuffed up my whole run all right once you've got that first part of the vaccine we're going to head back to the zombie that i mentioned that we did not take care of on the stairs we need to go up those stairs on the way of course we're going to have to deal with a few battle toads here as they come out don't shoot so early like i did there again he was not, you know, he's a bit invulnerable the second that he jumps out. Don't forget on hardcore mode, there's more than just those two. And on higher difficulties, again, even more jump out. thing he hadn't moved he's still just on the stairs and then I missed as well I might be able to use this to synthesize the vaccine all right so we've got both parts of the vaccine now we need to head back to the room where we got the flash drive. Alright, combine both of the uh, vaccine parts and then place it into this machine guys and then the code is the same as always it is medium high low we'll get some cutscenes we can skip then you have to pick up the vaccine and then some more cutscenes and in control for a tiny second as we head through here And then once you skip this cutscene, you need to push up on the left thumbstick to uh, get through this section. Skip another scene. And we're going to head out this door and do our next boss fight. Very, very similar to the last Nemesis fight, guys. Shoot him as much as you can with the rocket launcher. Don't miss like I did there. 
if he does end up running around up the top, take care of the zombies. Um, do it very similar to what we did in the uh, normal run that we did earlier. But uh, if you don't miss as much as I did there, you should be able to take him out before he goes for a run. Ooh, we just stopped his run just there. And there we go. Once he falls down like that, he is done. Skip another scene. And we're going to head straight to the final Nemesis boss fight, guys. Now this fight, I don't know why the door wouldn't open for me here, but uh, anyway, you can just head straight through the door. Don't need to worry about picking up any goodies, of course, not on this run. Head straight for the rail gun, open it, and then access it. Just press right trigger as soon as it's available, and then you can skip the scene. And we're going to look for the, uh, the blisters that open up. Depending on what sort of attack he chooses to do, uh, we're going to get rid of his blisters there, and then the uh, far, the bottom right battery, we'll call it. He'll get back up after each battery, guys, so we just need to rinse and repeat. That was a bit early. But yeah, this is real, real tricky on Nightmare and on um, Inferno, even with the ability to heal, guys. So it'll never be as easy as it is right now. Okay, and rinse and repeat for one more battery. Whoops. You can dodge those attacks. One more. There we go. He's going to fall. We're going to push in the third battery. And once you've done that, as soon as the third battery's in, it's done, guys. You just run for the rail gun and you use it. I've never been hit trying to get back to the rail gun, even on harder difficulties. Forward on the left thumbstick and then trigger again once. Once the gun's in position. And there we go, we can skip the scene. And now we can head through to find Nikolai. And of course, Carlos. straight to the elevator and uh, ride the elevator up. Not much to say here guys, you guys have all done this before if you're watching this hardcore run. I can still catch him. I can take this opportunity to say a big big thank you though if you are watching guys, I really appreciate it. Alright, skip the scene, make sure you get a body shot. I think I nearly missed. And there we go! Skip all the cutscenes and that is it guys. That is the hardcore run. That is the no healing achievement that's about to pop when we get here to the results. And at the same time, we got the S rank, guys. We did it in one hour and then 29 seconds. Um, once again, doesn't matter if you were quicker off or slower. That's not what's important. We got through the hardcore run. We did that one mandatory heal. We got the achievements. Now what you've got to do is you've got to do a Nightmare Run and an S Rank Inferno Run if you've been following along. Just a reminder guys, I will not be doing a Nightmare Run video because it would be exactly the same as my Inferno Run. Uh, the only difference being that there are no auto saves in, in the Inferno Run. Okay guys, 
I'm starting to lose my voice again at the end of this recording. I don't know if you can hear that. Big, big thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support my channel, please head over to Patreon and uh, become a member of the Aussie Army over there. Come say hi on Twitch and Discord as well. Uh, I feel like I'm telling you to do so many things. Just do whatever you can or whatever you want to do, guys. Either way, thank you very, very much. And I'll catch you all next time.